Welcome to 7-6, Natural Logarithms. And this is our last chapter 7 section. So, let's talk about natural logarithms. Our objective is to evaluate and simplify natural logarithmic expressions and to solve equations using them. Hopefully we have, we've now had a little practice solving equations with logarithms and exponents, so we should be getting better at it. Okay. Remember, from, I don't remember what section, but from a couple of seconds, sections ago, we had a very special kind of exponential function that had e to the x power. Remember, e was a natural, or sorry, e was an irrational number. The opposite natural logarithmic function would be log base e of x. But we write this in a very special way. We write it as ln of x, called the natural logarithmic function. These mean the same thing, but this is the correct way to write it. And of course, just like logarithms and exponential functions, they are inverse. So that means that if we have e to the b and b equals ln of a, and the opposite. So they are inverse of each other. Right. <laughs> so here's a picture of what e to the x and the natural log of y look like. This purple has e to the x, and then green is the ln of x. So here's our here's our green function, here's the natural log, and here is our purple function. Here is e to the x power. Now, notice that the same thing that was true about logs and exponential functions is also true. They are <laughs> inverses about, about the line x, sorry, y equals x. So they're just a reflection of each other. Okay. So the same rules that we've been using for logarithms apply here. So we can use the same properties as before. So to write this as a single natural logarithm, well, first, I see a 2 in the front, <laughs> so I would use the power rule, and the minus right here tells me that I would use the quotient rule. So let's do the power rule first. So ln of 15 squared minus the natural log of 75, and now we simplify the natural log of 15 squared over 75, we can simplify that even further to be the natural log of 3. And then from there, we can evaluate this on a calculator, but it's now simplified. So let's do the same thing for a few more. Same here. I see a plus and I see a 2. That tells me power rule and product rule. So this turns into the natural log of 7 plus nat <coughs> natural log of 5 squared. Multiply them together. We're going to get the natural log of 7 times 25 is going to be 175. <coughs> Putting them both together. Introduce some variables. We still have the same thing going on. So power rule, those pop over, and we get the natural log of x squared minus natural log of 2x squared. Don't forget, they are both squared. Let's simplify. Oh, actually, let's do them both the same. So the negative tells us a quotient. So we're going to have the natural log of x squared over... <laughs> Well, square both of them, which gives us 4x squared. The x squareds cancel out, and I'm left, left with the natural log of 1 quarter. Very nice. For the third one, <coughs> all pluses, so we're going to multiply them all together. I'm going to do this all in one step. So that's going to be the natural log of x to the third. y squared. 
and 5, which I should have wrote first. So let's do that. So the natural log of 5, x to the third, y squared. And that is all combined as a single natural logarithm. So we can use this inverse relationship between the function and the <laughs> We can use the inverse relationship between this function and this function to solve logarithmic and exponential equations, just like we did with regular logarithms. If we see a natural log, we're going to raise it to e. If we see e to the x, we're going to take a natural log on both sides. Do not forget that e is just a number. Okay? e is just a number. 2.7 something. Okay? So let's solve this equation. I see a natural log, so I'm immediately going to take, I'm going to raise both sides to e. So this turns into e to the fourth power, and it's going to be equal to x minus 3 squared. So, what's complicated? We don't have to expand this because <coughs> e right here is just a number. Right? So the way I would get x by itself here is to take the square root of both sides. That leaves me e squared, but don't forget that it is plus or minus e squared equals x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides, and we're left with x equals to about, use your calculator, 10.39 or negative 4.39. Either one of those are correct. Just by using the E button on your calculator, which on ours is above the LN button, above the natural log button. Let's try two more. Whoops. Sorry. Okay. All right. ln x of 2. So basically, we're going to raise both sides to e. So now we have e squared equals x. This is a nice easy one because e squared is just a number. Even though it looks like a letter, it's still a number. So x is going to be equal to 7.389. <coughs> For this problem, we set it up with e to the fourth equals 3x plus 5 squared. And again, because e is just a number, we can now take the square root of both sides. This gives me plus or minus e squared is equal to 3x plus 5. Right? <coughs> so now from here, we are going to have to subtract 5 from both sides. And we're going to get two different equations now. So it's going to be 3x is equal to <coughs> e squared minus 5. So 2.38 divide that by 3. We're going to have x is equal to 0.79. Or let's use the negative. So we have negative e squared <coughs> minus 5 is going to be 3x is going to be equal to the negative 12.38 divided by 3 and we're going to have x is equal to minus 4.13. Okay. Just about, <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, just a matter of using your calculator. Okay. So let's try the opposite. Okay. Let's try the opposite kind of problem. Here, 
we see a problem that has a P in it. So, our first step is to, and of course, our variable is in the exponent, which is what we want to simplify. Okay, so the first step is to get the E by itself. Nice and easy to start. You subtract 2 from both sides. That gives me 4 e to the 2x equals d. Divide both sides by 4. So we have e to the 2x is going to be equal to 3 and a half. Now, <coughs> to simplify, okay, I can use, I can set up, I can take a log, a natural log of both sides. So, I take the natural log here, I take the natural log here, I use the power rule to throw this over there. And we're left with 2x times the natural log of e equals the natural log of 3.5. These cancel out. The natural log of e is just 1. That's the definition. So now all we have to divide, all we have to do is divide by 2. Dividing both sides by 2. And using my calculator, x is going to be about equal to 0.626. Okay? 0.626. Let's try the one more. <coughs> one more. So here, e is already by itself. So all I have to do is take the natural log of both sides. Okay? So that's going to camp, that's going to leave me x minus 2 is going to be equal to the natural log of 12. Okay? So I skipped a step there. <coughs> Hopefully you can see how it works. The L and the E, the L and the natural log and the E cancel each other out, and we're left with just this. So x is going to be equal to the natural log of 12 plus 2 which gives us, from the calculator, the natural log of 12 plus 2, 4.48. And finally, what could be better than a nice word problem? <laughs> okay, so, even though it's a lot to read, this problem is easy to solve. So a spacecraft can attain a stable orbit 300 kilometers above Earth if it reaches a velocity of 7.7 .7 kilometers a second. The formula, of course, what we want, the formula for its maximum velocity, v in kilometers per second, is right here. Okay. Notice, inside of this, we have a natural law. All right. Okay. Booster rocket fires for t seconds. And the velocity of the exhaust is C, kilometers per second. The ratio of the mass of the rocket filled with fuel to the mass without fuel is R. So here are all our variables. We got T, we got C, we got R. So, suppose that the rocket shows a photo over to the right, <coughs> has a mass ratio of 25, firing time of 100 seconds, and an exhaust velocity is shown, 2.8 kilometers per second. Can the spacecraft obtain a stable orbit 300 kilometers above Earth? So what are we looking for? Basically, this is just, even though it's complicated, all we're going to have to do is plug our numbers into the equation. So, let's start with the equation. V equals negative point zero zero nine eight T plus C natural log of R. Let's plug our numbers in. We know that V is going to be equal to 0 0.0098 times T, which is 100 seconds, plus 2.8, which is C, times the natural log of 25. 
log all these numbers into the calculator, and we're going to get about, let me see about sign, about 8. So, is this bigger than, oops, than the 7.7 .7 kilometers per second that I need to go? The answer is yes. So the shuttle can attain a stable orbit 300 kilometers in Earth. An interesting place where we can use natural logarithms to help express relationships in the physical world. This is actually true.